Good morning. Welcome to Old St. Mary's Church as we celebrate the Eucharist on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent. The music and readings for this Mass can be found on page 1101 in the back of your hymnal or in this week's worship aid. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you'd like. Just click the Sunday worship aid link on the front page of our parish website, oldstmarys.com. Presiding at liturgy is Father Wilson Smith, and preaching is Father Schoberly. Our gathering song is number 510, Come Lord Jesus, number 510. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, today on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we have the great joy of celebrating a baptism. With us today are Lucas and his parents, Matthew and Jennifer, and godparents, Kevin and Laura. Dear parents and godparents, today you have experienced great joy. You have experienced great joy for some time now at the birth of your child, and the church shares in your happiness. Today, this joy has brought you to the church to give thanks to God for the gift of your child and to celebrate a new birth in the waters of baptism. This community rejoices with you, for today the number of those baptized in Christ will be increased, and we offer you our support in raising your child in the practice of the faith. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us now prepare ourselves to participate in this celebration, listening to God's word, praying for this child and their family, and renew our commitment to the Lord and to his people. And so first, parents, I ask you, what name do you give your child? Lucas James. And what do you ask of God's church for Lucas? Baptism. In asking for baptism for your child, you're undertaking the responsibility of raising him in the faith, so that keeping God's commandments, he may love the Lord and his neighbor, as Christ has taught us. Do you understand this responsibility? Yes. And godparents, are you ready to help the parents of Lucas in their Christian duty? Yes. And members of Old St. Mary's Church, are you ready to help these parents in their duty? 
Lucas, James, the church of God receives you with great joy. In its name, I sign you with the sign of the cross of Christ our Savior. Then after me, I'll ask your parents and godparents to do the same. Now let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Thus says the Lord, You, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, too small to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be the ruler in Israel, whose origin is of old, from ancient times. Therefore the Lord will give them up until the time when she who is to give birth has born, and the rest of his kindred shall return to the children of Israel. He shall stand firm and shepherd his flock by the strength of the Lord, in the majestic name of the Lord his God. And they shall remain, for now his greatness shall reach to the ends of the earth and he shall be peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Son of man, you have claimed for 
hand be on the man at your right hand, the Son of Man you have confirmed as your own. And we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocaust and in sin offering you took no delight. Then I said, as is written of me in the scroll, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. First, he says, sacrifice and offerings, holy cost and sin offering, you neither desire nor delight in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, behold, I come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and traveled to the hill country in haste to a town of Judah, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the infant leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out in a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And how does this happen to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For at the moment the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the infant in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed are you who believed that what was spoken to you by the Lord would be fulfilled. The Gospel of the Lord. You, 
I wonder as I wander out under the sky how Jesus the Savior did come for to die for poor, ornery people like you and like I. I wonder as I wander out under the sky. Back at the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, I started with a different Christmas song, Mary Did You Know? In that song, I wanted to highlight the question, what did Mary actually know about all the events in her life as they were taking place? Did she have any understanding as she was growing up that she was the Immaculate Conception? And probably our best response to that question, thinking about that, reflecting on all this is, Old St. Mary's, do you know? And let's face it, Immaculate Conception, Guadalupe, Simbangabi, every Catholic culture reference during Advent, St. Nicholas, St. Lucy, the O Anaphons of this final week leading to Christmas are intimately tied to Christmas. Let's not kid ourselves. Music spills out around the feast of Christmas, from the classical and religious to the more secular and contemporary. Christmas is solidly in our sights, as we hear these readings, as we look at these characters. But it is not the light and fluffy Christmas that everyone thinks it is, a one-day event where the tree is on the curb the following day. In fact, the hard-hitting Christmas that is our faith base has very little to do with all the trappings, except as the trappings themselves engage the core of the Christmas message. It is not a disservice to today's reading to connect them to the Christmas message, nor for us to say Christmas defines the relationship we see today between Mary and Elizabeth, God coming into our world, God preparing the world to receive his son, connects us all to these stories and the people in them, our faith ancestors. Remember that after the birth of Jesus, Mary is going to take time to reflect on all these things and how they all connect with her son. And it's our invitation to do so before, during, and after. That is the invitation to us, to think about Jesus, the stories about his birth, reflect on the biblical characters, and to ponder how this impacts us in our lives today. And so we wander and we wonder. I wonder as I wander out under the sky how Jesus the Savior did come for to die for poor ornery people like you and like I. I wonder as I wander out under the sky. The to die part of the song is also part of Christmas. We hear this about Jesus, especially today in our reading from Hebrews. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me, Jesus coming in the flesh. In Holocaust and sin offerings, you took no delight. And then I said, as it is written of me in the scroll, behold, I come to do your will, O God. By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Lest we think of Jesus, the Savior, coming to die as not part of the gospel today, too, we simply need to reflect on Johnny the Bee jumping for joy in Mom Elizabeth's womb and what is going to happen to him. He will be held as a political prisoner at Herod's whim. He will have his head chopped off, another of Herod's whims. And he has simply said, the Messiah has entered the world. Get ready. In contrast, 
When Mary birthed Jesus, t'was in a cow stall, with wise men and shepherds and angels and all. And down from God's heaven, a star's light did fall, as the promise of ages it there did recall. When we look to the heavens at night, it is the stars piercing through the dark that give contrast and beauty. Mary and Elizabeth, that point of light, in that joyful point between the struggles in their marriages about conceiving a child late in life and conceiving a child by the grace of the Holy Spirit. Both fathers struggled, and while as faithful souls they were both totally on board with God's plan, the neighbors still talked. There were rumors and remarks and side conversations. Imagine the field day it would have been if they had Facebook and Twitter back then. And if you remember back to Father Stu's homily last week, as he talked about the flip of our rejoicing and looking instead at Christ rejoicing in us, that in the middle of the darkness it is God who rejoices for us and gives his life to us. Later this week we will take that another step. We will celebrate a prayer service to help those who wait in darkness, who are mourning, who are depressed, who are weighed down, who do not experience the Christmas as joyful or the season as joyful and the trappings they encounter are counter to their mood. The simple meeting this morning of these two ladies, Mary and Elizabeth, is a moment of light and charged with the potential of life and light of children within their wombs. It is for poor, ordinary people like you and like I that the message of Christmas is given. And this fourth Sunday of Advent is the final merge lane of the expressway taking us to a stable. The simple story, echoed in many Christmas songs, is meant to touch our lives where we most need it. And it says, Christ is breaking through. That's the heart of the whole message. As we prepare for Christmas this week, whether we are cheerful, exuberant, and excited, or sorrowful, feeling insufficient or depressed. Jesus is still to be born. That is the reality. Christ breaks into a world. A bright light in a dark night. A mystery of God becoming a human boy child, much as we celebrate baptism this morning. And the stark reality of an infant born into poverty and parents struggling to care for him to find a place where he can be born. As we wander the way of our world and wonder why God still doesn't come down and fix it all for us, why the heavenly light does not completely engulf the dark of night, maybe it's already happened. Maybe we're not doing our part to make it fully known as we should and as we could. It has happened. Ponder it. Make it known. Would our catechumens and candidates please come forward? Catechumens and candidates, today's scripture remind us of the Lord's coming in the unexpected ways that he comes. The Lord comes among us in unexpected ways too. It is why we need time to reflect and consider 
that we may recognize him in the unexpected. As our Advent journey winds down, go now in the peace of Christ to reflect on today's scriptures. Break open the word of God in your lives. We will long for the day when you will join us at the Eucharistic table. Go in peace. Now invite Lucas, his parents, and godparents to please come stand before the altar once more. And let us all stand as we profess our faith. Dear parents and godparents, through the sacrament of baptism, this child, Lucas, you have presented, is about to receive from the love of God new life by water and the Holy Spirit. For your part, you must strive to bring him up in the faith so that this divine life may be preserved from the contagion of sin and grow in him day by day. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, then mindful of your own baptism, renounce sin and profess faith in Christ Jesus, the faith of the church in which children are baptized. And so, parents and godparents, I ask you, and all of us here in the Old St. Mary's community. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith, the faith of the Church. We're proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let us now invoke the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for those about to receive the grace of baptism and for their parents, godparents, and for all of the baptized. Give these children the new birth of baptism through the radiant divine mystery of your death and resurrection, and join them to your holy church, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Make them faithful disciples and witnesses to your gospel through baptism and confirmation, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Lead them through holiness of life in the joys of the heavenly kingdom, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Make their parents and grandparents shining examples of the faith to these children and keep their families always in your love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Renew the grace of baptism in each one of us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who lead the church, those who lead the people in our world, will create pathways for lasting peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant protection to all who suffer religious persecution, shelters for refugees, comfort and healing to all affected by gun violence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Prince of Peace guide us to help victims of abusive relationships and domestic violence. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the full recovery of all the sick. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace and eternal rest to all who have died. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our prayers especially those of Geraldine Clifford, and our prayers and community presentation in person and online for the baptismal families and every need in the quiet of our hearts.
we pray? Lord, hear our prayer. Having raised our prayers to our loving God, let us now invoke the intercession of the holy saints as we bring our baptismal candidate to the font. You are welcome to turn and watch. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Holy angels of God, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God, pray for us. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ graciously hear us, Christ graciously hear us. Lucas, may the strength of Christ the Savior protect you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us now pray, dear brothers and sisters, that the Lord God Almighty may bestow new life on this child by water and the Holy Spirit. Most merciful Father, from the font of baptism, you have made the new life of your children well up within us. of water bless the Lord springs of water bless the Lord you've been pleased to unite by water and the Holy Spirit all the baptized into one people in your son Jesus Christ springs of water bless the Lord springs of water bless the Lord you free us by the spirit of your love whom you pour into our hearts so that we may delight in your peace. Springs of water, bless the Lord. Springs of water, bless the Lord. You choose the baptized that they may joyfully proclaim to all the nations the gospel of your Christ. Springs of water, bless the Lord. Water, bless the Lord. By the mystery of this blessed water, graciously lead to spiritual rebirth your servant Lucas James, on whom you have called to this cleansing in the faith of the church, that they may have eternal life through Christ our Lord. Matthew and Jennifer, we ask you once more, is it your will, therefore, that Lucas should have baptism in the faith of the church, which we have all now professed with you? Yes. Let's bring him forward. There we go. There we go. Lucas, James, I baptize you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You have put on Christ, in Him you have been baptized. Father. 
Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin, given you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and joined you to his people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation. As Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king, so you may remain as a member of Christ, priest, prophet, and king, unto eternal life. Receive the light of Christ, parents and godparents. This light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly so that your child, enlightened by Christ, may walk always as a child of the light and persevering in the faith may run to meet the Lord when he comes with all the saints in his heavenly court. Amen. Lucas, may the Lord Jesus, who has made the deaf to hear and the mute to speak, Grant that you may soon receive his word with ears, with your ears, and profess the faith with your lips to the glory and praise of God the Father. Amen. Lucas, you have been baptized. Alleluia, alleluia. 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 My friends, uh, thank you as always for your generosity to the ministry at Old St. Mary's. The baskets will now be passed to accept your offering. If you are watching from home, please feel free to donate to the parish office or go to oldstmary's.com and click on the Give button on the website. Thank you so much again for your generosity. Thank you. Please join us in singing number 1009, Ave Maria, number 1009.
fruit of your womb. Jesus, formed in your faith, Ave Maria, Alleluia. Jesus, born in your love, Ave Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. 
giving thanks to you, held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join us in summer singing number 1011, Litany of Mary, number 1011.
Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Friends, as always, be sure to pick up a copy of this week's bulletin or check it out on our website. The schedule of Christmas Eve and Christmas Day Masses is listed in the bulletin and on our webpage. Please note that there will be no 5 p.m. Mass on Saturday, December 25th. There's a long-standing Catholic tradition of the blessing of homes on the Solemnity of the Epiphany. That's January 2nd. If you'd like to observe this tradition in your household, please pick up a blue Epiphany of the Lord Catholic Household Blessing leaflet from the tables in the commons. Copies of the 22 Catholic Extension Society calendar are also available in the commons. Um, Chicago Shares vouchers will be available for purchase after Mass today. These vouchers can be given to people you encounter who ask for your assistance and use to purchase food at several South Loop grocery stores and restaurants. Uh, to those of you traveling over the holidays, we of course wish you safest of travels and a very Merry Christmas. As you celebrate Christmas Mass, please remember all of us in your prayers and of course be assured that you will be in ours. Uh, finally, uh, this is just kind of a personal update slash announcement. Uh, as many of you know, I'm not uh, an American citizen, so I only have Canadian citizenship, and I've been here in the United States for 10 years, but only on temporary status. Uh, unfortunately, there's quite a backup with U.S. Customs and Immigration Services, so I am applying to be a permanent resident. But due to this backup, I'm currently, my status is expiring this month. And so I have to step back for a time as your associate pastor uh, because of that. Um, so basically what I'm asking for is your fervent prayers that we can get this thing passed through as soon as possible. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to be in residence with the Paulist Fathers still here in Chicago. Um, and I still plan to join you in this context of prayer for Mass, so you're not getting rid of me. I'll still kind of be up here doing stuff, but I can't do anything else. I won't be in the office. I can't prepare, you know, couples for marriage. I can't do blessings, all the, all the other kind of quote-unquote work stuff, unfortunately, for the time being. So we just ask for your prayers that this permanent residence application can come through as soon as possible, and the plan is as soon as it does, I'll get right back to work and I'll be rehired and, uh, and get back to it. So thank you very much for that. Uh, if I could ask our uh, parents and godparents and young Lucas James to please come before the altar one more time for our final blessing. And let us pray. May our Almighty God, who sanctifies the world by Christ's radiant advent, and through him, born of the Virgin Mary, brings joy to Christian mothers as the hope of Christ's life shines forth upon their child. Graciously bless the mother of this child, so that as she now gives thanks for the gift of her child, she may always remain united with him in thanksgiving. In Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord God Almighty, Father of all, <clears throat> the giver of life both in heaven and on earth, bless the father of this child so that together with his wife he may prove by word and example to be the first witness of the faith to their child. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. So that rejoicing at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh and expectant at his coming in majesty, and who by water and the Spirit has given us new birth into eternal life, may he bless abundantly all of his faithful here present, that always and everywhere they may be active members of his people, and may he bestow his peace on all who are gathered here, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join us in singing number 500, O Come Divine Messiah, number 500. Divine Messiah, the world in silence waits the day when hope shall sing its triumph and sadness flee away. Dear Savior, haste, come, come to earth, dispel the night and show your face. Bid us hail the dawn of grace.
Oh.